Okay, I'd like to call to order the March 5th, 2020 meeting of the Cold Spring Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I'm Aaron Wolf. We've got Eric Worth, John Martin, Donald McDonald, and Laura Bosey with us. Um, that's the full board. Um, tonight on the agenda, we have um, only one thing. It's a public hearing for 192 Main Street for um, an addition and an expansion of an accessory building. Uh, previously, we had uh, scheduled the continued public hearing for 21 Parsonage. That has been postponed until the first Thursday in April. April 2nd. April 2nd. At, re at the request of the applicant, it's been um, postponed until April 2nd. Okay, great. And it looks like the uh, usual audience has gotten that message. So that is good news. Um, we also had on the agenda approval of minutes. The minutes from the last meeting have not been uh, drafted yet. Um, so we will get to those at our next meeting. And we can jump right in with the, uh, the public hearing. So, yep, come on up. So let's open the public hearing, and um, everybody has materials. Do you have anything new to Oh, well, I'm to supposed us? to bring these to you, yes. right? So one neighbor, this card didn't come back, but it's there in this. Does that make sense? Yep, we only um, care about the white ones. Oh, you want me to keep the green ones then? No, we'll keep them. Okay. But if they don't answer it, you still did your... Yeah, uh, I believe he wrote you a letter anyway, so I don't know why they, that, I didn't okay. get a card for that one. Did you put these in order? Wow. I don't know if I did. Sorry, I'm not sure. I've been working on this a lot. So. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want me to give a, my presentation, a little presentation, or how? how um, yeah, just give me a couple minutes okay. to check these. The library 10? 10, yes. Okay. 10 more is All right. Um, this looks good. We did get a couple of emails um, in support of the application, and I'll read those once we get to the public comment period. Um, okay, so come on up. Um, this is the portion of the meeting where you get to now. Tell us, uh, get into the merits of the application. Even though there's no public audience here, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, that's a member of the <laughs> <laughs> I, guess. I thought you were with the, uh, you did the work, no? She I, she did not do any of this work except for the work, sorry, yeah, on so. the barn. The Beth and Paul designed the barn uh, renovation. Okay. And all this other work that you see is my work. So. Sorry, so I, you are a member of the public and <laughs> also with the applicant. Um, do I, you want me to stand up? Okay. So, in the interest of time, um, I wrote out what I felt was like the main arguments, and you guys hopefully have had that for four weeks now. So, but I can summarize it also. It's it's part of the main application that I turned in, you know, a month ago. Um, so I will refer to that. And if you haven't, has, have you not had a chance to read it? Because I can just summarize it at that point. Um, I, I think we've all read it, but what, okay. what we'd really like to start with is a description of the project. Right, that's and what and I just wanted, when I get to that point, I wanted to know if I needed to go into the detail of that or not, so. but you can let me know. Okay. Um, so I'm at 192 Main Street, and I've been the owner of that property with my husband for 14 years, and uh, I know several of you on the board and several people I don't. Um, we're proposing sort of a multi-part project that we feel is very modest in scale compared to what it could be, I guess. Um, uh, we've tried to be good stewards of our property the whole time we've lived here. We've fixed it up a lot, and what we've added on, we've tried to keep it as literally as small as possible because our house is a small house, I guess. However, life happens, and 
we needed a little bit more space and um, now we've sort of drawn the short straw and have to do something with to sort of stabilize the structure of our barn which is what started this application um, investigating that further with Beth and Paul who were the architects on that project we realized that it was uh, much worse than we thought and we needed to kind of change our overall plan for the barn um, so we're proposing uh, a small 9 by 16 we're proposing to demolish the barn rebuild it in substantially the same place and put a little 9 by 16 two-story addition sort of to the east rear part of it um, so if you're if you have the photos of the structures uh, the best one to see I think that shows you is this one here that shows you this is the barn in relation to this is our neighbor's shed behind us and we're proposing to put it kind of tuck it in on this side in the back of, of the barn basically um, and then that's part one of the project and part two is um, a small second story addition to our primary residence over the existing first story um, that will stick will, will cause a one foot four inch additional sort of coverage of that side yard area um, we <coughs> I mean, the reasons for doing this aren't important, but we feel like these are small improvements um, in keeping with the scale and the mass of our current structures on the property and with the character of the neighborhood. Um, I just have your full five points that I know you're gonna go through later, but I've organized my comments into those five points. So the first one being un whether an undesirable change is produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by granting the variances we're asking for, which are for the house addition, it's just a side yard variance. For the barn addition, it's a rear yard coverage variance, rear, rear yard setback variance, and side yard setback variance. So the barn has three, and the residence has one, basically. Um, again, I feel that these additions are modest in scale. They're designed following our local historic preservation standards and the Department of Interior standards. That's the logic behind them, 100%. Um, particularly, sort of they're, they encourage additions, modern additions to historic structures. Our structures were all built in the um, mid 19th century up to 1900 was the barn was built. They encourage any modern additions to be sort of clearly secondary to the historic structures in scale and um, they encourage setting it off from the main facade of the structure so you can see that it's not part of the main, you can still, the main structure is still legible historically in its, mm -hmm. in its context and they encourage you to preserve the setting of structures especially with barns so we have another, a little shed on our property that was probably blacksmith tools or a, a horse area at some point and um, our house obviously and the barn was sort of built at where it was as sort of an aisle off of Main Street, which was a busy thoroughfare. And we have a lot of evidence that, you know, Blacksmith lived in our house for a while and um, there, they were stabling horses there. And obviously, it, eventually it became more of a carriage house, the structure. And now we use it as a works, homework studio and a workshop in the bottom. And the, the use will continue with our application. Um, our application, I feel, doesn't change the current conditions of our neighborhood. Um, it, we strove hard to preserve the privacy of our neighbors and the current use patterns as they are um, and the density as it is basically in the back um, so that it protects the open space. Our block feels very open um, because we have all of the historic main dwellings lined up kind of on the main streets, on Fishkill Avenue, on Main Street, on Morris Avenue. And these, my barn is part of a little cluster of three structures that are like in the center, then there's not really any other big structures. So it's it's our our backyards feel very open to each other. Um, however, my barn does shield all of our neighbors on the eastern side from what was Whistling Willie's and what will be some other restaurant bars, basically trash area where they're giant dumpsters. They're like noisy where people smoke a lot. Like this two-story structure actually acts as a physical shield between their B1 zoned property and our residential district so we're kind of like the buffer I, I guess you'd say um, 
the evidence that this doesn't isn't a detriment to nearby properties of the neighborhood. Part, partial evidence is we should have received three letters and emails, which I guess Aaron will read later, um, from my neighbors at 7 Fishkill Avenue, 5 Fishkill Avenue, and 196 Main, which are the three properties that are most directly affected by this construction. And just to let you guys know, like, I talked to all of my neighbors except the one that I didn't know. I couldn't get them. I knocked on their door several times um, and explained and showed them the plans, and they're all very aware of what's going on. So. Um, I would never have proposed this if I thought that it would have been controversial or something like that. Uh, so that's number one, undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties. Number two, whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other means, basically, which would be feasible, but would not require a variance. And that's my long explanation that I, um, that's on, I think, page three or four of my original application. Um, so if you wanted to read that in detail, you could, but I go over the other possibilities for achieving our objectives that wouldn't require a variance. And um, just the overall summary is our lot, if you can see on the, um, sorry about a big one. On the map, our lot is like very long and deep. It's actually quite a good size lot for the historic village. Um, but, because it's only 41 feet across, it's 50 feet in the back, 41 here, it's, and it's 160 or something deep, the area, the buildable area of our lot is this little sliver in the middle. So the anything we, and if you wanted to locate a new structure, you could locate it there, I guess, but anything you want to do to preserve sort of the history of the property, um, you have to do it within the setbacks because obviously you can see the barn is currently almost entirely in both of the setbacks. Our house is almost entirely in the, rear, the front yard and the side yard setbacks. And the little shed that we have that's also from the, the 1800s is in the side yard setback. So um, we have, I mean, I know that's not entirely unique to the historic district. There's so many of us have this kind of thing, but my property is a little bit unique in that it has plenty of space on it. Like I'm not asking for a, an overall lot coverage variance. We're going right up to what's allowed by modern zoning standards. Um, and if you were to visit my lot, you would see it's like very open and our neighbor's lots are very open. And partially that's because the structures are clustered how they are now, way up on the front property line and way back in the back. Um, and just like our neighbors have the, their back structure way back in the back. And it's one of the reasons why they don't object to this proposal because the sheds and the barn are in away from everyone's sort of main use, I guess. So it's not really infecting people's privacy. Um, I guess that's the main thing. So we could build a new structure in the middle of this lot, which would totally obliterate the relationship of the historic barn to our house and to the other shed that was there. So um, for example, I'm doing a lot of research in the Putnam History Museum for a different project right now. And you can see a lot of the structures that were there in all these old photos. And if we knocked this barn down and then it in a different location it wouldn't be legible as actually the same use sort of historic use that it was we're trying to preserve the setting that it was in by keeping it in the same spot basically um, and you can kind of see on this photo which is also on the first page of your photos it's hard to see but you can see my house in the lower left hand corner it says looking north from main street um, it has like an archway that goes into our backyard you can see my house and the relationship between it and the barn. It's pretty much a straight shot from Main Street through this little arch that I framed it with. Um, moving it to the middle would not only make it more encroach more on my neighbor's properties, but it would also, you know, sort of lose that connection to Main Street, and which I feel is meaningful. It's also connected to the original owners of the what's now the Whistling Willies building. But your your addition would would fill in this open space that you can yes. see through to the library. Which is uh, one of the nice things about the hill is you can see through backyards and you know and and so that's going to cut that off. The yes, the I addition. can't see through to the library there, but you it will cut, because there's a an evergreen, a giant evergreen right there. But well, yes, it's got a plant. What taken. I'm saying is you're going yes, to put you're putting you're putting an addition right yes. here. Um, right. And I do have yes, and if it will help you, Donald, I have somebody was asking me last time about it's really hard to show like. But I, I brought this for you guys, maybe that will help you. To show like the density of those structures. So this shows what you're just talking about. Like there's a 
an alleyway right there. Yeah. Um, and this would fill in that, that alleyway. Right. Um, although the alleyway is often filled with trash and everything else. But. So this kind of shows the, as best I could, this is literally, this is not like a scientific thing. This is as best I could facsimilate where the structures are below all those trees there. Um, So that's number two, uh, whether we can achieve it by some other means. We could move it to the middle. We could also put the addition on the front of the barn in the same aisle that Donald was talking about, but toward the front. And that would make it less in the rear yard. Um, so it would make us have request less of a variance. However, it would, it's, would go against all, we're trying to work with the historic preservation standards too. And I agree with these, standards that it's better to have it sort of offset off the main view of the building. You can't mm -hmm. really see the structure very well from Butterfield Library. You can see the upper floor, but you can't you see. It? I'm sorry. Yeah. Do I have to go to the historic board for the work? Yes. The, I'm going it's next. it's visible from Main Street or visible from It's where? visible from, it has public the dumpster way. from two public ways. Yeah. Okay. And, and actually, Donald pointed out, you can see part of it from Butterfield Library. I have that on in your photos, I think. Um, yeah. The second page. This is the view. I mean, I went up close, but this is the view from like the Butterfield Library sidewalk. So here's the barn in here. And you have it in, I think, one of yours, okay. this, top, this top photo. And so then this is the view from the other public way of the, of the barn, anyway. It's like Whistling Willie's parking lot and dumpster side. Mm -hmm. So we do have to go before the board, um, the historic board, yeah. Um, so this little pass through area right here in that <clears throat> picture you're just pointing to there that that'll become sort of there won't be a flow through there yes. it'll be mm -hmm. the new structure uh, yes. addition. Is, okay. which is will be about nine feet it's from yeah, the from the nine feet, feet out from the side so it, you'll, it'll stick out a little yeah it's, it's designed to line up with my neighbor's barn not, not which is this board? Which is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you can't see very good. Yeah. Okay. So you can see it on here. Right. It's designed to sort of line up right with the corner of theirs. Right. I, I see. Um, so that's number two. Number three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Um, I mean, that's obviously for you guys to decide, but I don't feel it's any more substantial than other very. Um, variants that you've granted in similar situations throughout the village, but um, I know each application is specific and unique. Um, again, I think this is like a modest addition that doesn't change the conditions of our backyard very much. Um, there's no view, for example, from Butterfield that people can see into my yard, like they can't see through to my house in this um, instance. They, they, you're kind of up and elevated, so you see kind of over the roofs. So. Um, it would block my view, I guess, of that corridor where there's lots of trash and compost piles, but um, I obviously want to block that view. So, um, And again, one of the neighbors that wrote a letter in support of this is the one who owns the, green, the little barn, the green barn that's there. So, um, and she and her husband are in support of this application. I, and she gave me a copy of her letter and specifically says she doesn't think the density um, as an issue at all in the yard. It makes more sense to have those structures be clustered together and no, we don't use the, that area as a place where we all sit, for example. Although we do use all of our backyards collectively a lot. The other, the open space in our yards. Um, so that's number three. I don't feel it's a substantial variance. It's sort of within keeping of people who are in the historic district and have current buildings right on the property line, um, historic structures. Uh, the ad, I don't feel it, it's up for you to decide obviously, but it, having an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood, and I've just outlined, those are sort of similar to character. Um, in this case, it's a very small project, so it's not gonna affect the environment very much. And the um, last thing, where whether the difficulty is allegedly self-created I mean, I feel I can't reasonably improve on the structures that are not pre-existing, non-conforming without getting these variances, and these improvements are reasonable and in keeping with the way that other people in our whole village can improve their properties. My lot just happens to have these very narrow strictures on it. Um, so I hope that you will find it 
uh, reasonable to grant these variances. And that's my little presentation. Okay. I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have. Do we need to clarify any of the, I, I, so let me just go back to the variances so we're all clear on what they are before we get into our discussion. Um, so there is one variance for the house. There's going to be an expansion on the second story. It's going to go one foot and four inches um, deeper into the side yard, and it goes all the way to the side yard. So it's a, um, a variance of 10 feet or 100% for this um, addition to the second story. Um, and then for the um, accessory building, there are uh, two sections of code. There's a max, uh, maximum, I'm sorry, there's a minimum required distance from any lot line in the rear yard to an accessory building, and that's 10 feet. So we're going um, a 10, 10 feet for the side yard and 7.8 foot variance for the rear yard. Um, additionally, there's a maximum area coverage of 30% um, by an accessory building in a rear or side yard. And in the rear yard, we're going over that by 11.9%. So it's going to have a 42% um, coverage of the rear yard. So those are the variances that um, we're looking at. We did talk about um, another section of the code um, that seemed to apply. And John first said that um, it was there basically to um, enable the other one, but they were redundant, and we don't need to look at that specifically. The ones we have here are enough for, um, for the project to proceed. We don't have to um, specifically grant a variance to that. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Sure. Did, did the rear yard setback, did it used to be 20 feet? It's 20 feet for a build from the main structure, but ah, it's 10 okay. feet for an accessory. So my site plan has um, the shaded areas are the areas that we're adding on to, but the, the rear yard setback on that is for, I mean, it would be half what it's marked, I guess. It's marked at 20. So it appears that the entire addition to the barn is in all of the setback, but it's only mm -hmm. halfway in the right. setback. Right. That's, so. um, that's a normal way that... Take that you would do it. Okay, yeah. I didn't but realize that. Just a that's fine. Point. The side yard is still the same. Yes, great. Okay. I do have other photos here. I don't know if I, I was just going to use them if you guys had any questions about things. So, uh, um, just please ask me, and I'll show you different things. Um, mm -hmm. So there's there's another building, I think, somewhere right around here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And that's another shed, right? Yes. I can see that right there. It's, it's probably on that. Um, on, no, the photo that I just gave you, I don't know. I didn't get to make myself a copy. The overhead. You might be able to see on that. I, I, think it's, I don't think it's more. No, because the trees are over it. Uh, 20 feet. Um, I mean, it's neither here nor there, but I would, I guess, just like to state for the record that the little vinyl shed that you see that we're considering in this cluster of three, as well as the shed that Aaron is referencing, um, those aren't approved sheds. They're, they were, they're temporary and they're put there, uh, I'm assuming, without approval. Uh, so they, the green structure was the only permanent structure and that, I mean, they may have gotten approval for the temporary structures, I guess. but. Um, the green, sorry, the barn that is at my neighbor, 7 Fishkill Avenue, that's sort of the most involved structure, is the only permanent structure back there. Mm -hmm. If that makes any difference. Any, and, and the reason the uh, roof on the uh, accessory building is going to be raised uh, by what would be near two feet? A reason uh, for that? Well, this is, <laughs> this is the whole reason why we're doing this project. The whole building is below grade. And so it's rotting. It's like substantially below grade, like 18 inches. Um, we, we have a, a ditch dug all around it so that it 
doesn't have like dirt up to those 18 inches, but it's for whatever reason over all these years, it's, that's how it's, I don't know, it was that way when we moved in. Um, so we're trying to fix, the, the village has never fixed the drainage problem on Mountain Avenue, which it's in there, like it's on their agenda at some point further down the road, but Fishkill Avenue washes all the way down all of our yards basically, and so this structure has, has, is in that watershed basically. So we'd like to basically put a foundation on the structure and grade it normal, just so that it doesn't have this ditch around it. Um, and in order to do that, to put the foundation on, we, we and keep the same, you know, ceiling heights are relatively the same. We're we're raising it a little bit. So it would be two feet higher, up, you know, in these photos. It would, yes. Well, is it quite two feet? It's almost two feet. Well, it's so uh, that would give one it one foot eleven inches. Right. So yeah, two feet. <laughs> but just to be clear, a variance is not needed. Well, I know right. I know a variance is not needed, but we're talking about density, you know, just the overall mm -hmm. with the expansion of the accessory building. So sure. It's all. It's, I'm not saying we're looking for a variance. No, I know. I just wanted to point that out because this is the bulk issue. Uh, is is it a two-story um, shed? It's interesting that you asked that because in the I have it right here actually. It is a one and a half story shed right now. That's what it's classified as. But in the when it was originally built, which is this, this is the map, um, Sanborn map from 1905, which is the first map it appears on. So here's um, where the library is now, and this is my lot here. So it's originally a two-story barn, along with there was another barn here that got knocked down. Right. And how is that indicated? The two. Okay. So there's plenty of other structures that are one story, right. one story, and one and a half stories. There was plenty one and a half, but this was a two-story barn. So what will it be originally? Yeah. It's still going to be one and a half by our how we. But do. there'll be no flooring between you know the first floor and, and, yeah, and the other. No, the half there's story. Two, two story things. I didn't see. Do we the half story, story is uh, fifty percent of the. Yeah, and that stays the same with this application. The fifty percent. Is it currently the, like the one and a half story, as you say, or? It's currently classified, yeah, with the county as a one and a half. But story. you say it's classified, but does it currently have a floor and then another space above it? Yeah, that's the half story. Okay. And, and yes, that's mm -hmm. what we use for our um, studio works mm -hmm. for our business. So that just means that all the eaves are not. You know they're way low, so we just can use the little part in the middle. So give me an idea. Um, you don't have a section for us, but so what? Like in the studio, where's the? Uh, what's the? What's the wall height on the on the, the mm -hmm. end? What's the height between the floor of the studio above? And, oh, it's and on. The, it is marked on here. It's on. Um, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. Oh, you got it there. So here. Uh, See, it's a second floor. Finish floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so now we're at the wall like this. That's going on. So that's three foot seven. That's it. All right, all right. So you went through the, um, the uh, areas? Got oh, the, I can't remember what the code says, but it's like seven feet or below, or is it proved out somewhere that you're 50% of it? Uh, the, the square footage is? Can you answer that? I don't know. Yeah, we, we did check, double check on that, yes, but I don't have, I don't know if it's marked on the plans exactly. I mean, it's reflected in our application because it's a one and a half story structure and we're applying for a one and a half story structure. Yes. Continue. What is the height of the two? No, that's no, a lot. 20 feet is the maximum height. Yeah, we're well under the max. Is that what you were just saying, Aaron? We're the maximum height. John asked what the. Well, what you're not well under. I will allow. Oh, you're four, or you proposed here <coughs> 15 and 11. I don't. Donald, do you know this? Is, um, just to address your concern about the second story, I don't know if does that apply to an accessory building. I thought that the that what you're talking about about is only the third half story. Well, it's a definition of a story, and the code says that the accessory building can only be one and a half stories, so it would apply to that too. I don't think it's only for residential. Let me check. In fact, it was done. It was done because of a project on uh, Craigside Drive, 
where you had an accessory building that essentially turned into a two-story building and there was problems with it and so we decided to look at the code again and turn to do it to figure out a code we actually copied a code from another code because it worked well with um, an historic village and gable roofs and stuff like that but we tried to write it so that things get smaller as you go up that's what we tried to do and um, and uh, when I look at the elevation, I, mean, I, I can see how that is getting smaller, and I can see how it would probably prove out to be 50% of the floor area below. Where, where does the, the kind mean, of space that somebody could walk around in? Do you remember yeah, where that I mean, is in the code? Yeah. Um, I don't see it in 17. Um, 134, 17. You can also kind of see on the floor plan the reason that we're proposing what we're proposing is because the we're the, the accessory the addition is basically housing a stairwell and to the second floor and, and extra storage mm -hmm. so if we could accomplish that by making like a two-story building i guess we would have done that which I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to do that anyway but <laughs> um i don't know if that helps at all but it was part of the plans to keep it a one and a half store, so I'm, I'm positive that it is continues to be. So, do you currently use the building just at a, you know as a matter of use as workout and shop center? Yeah, so it's the same exact use. Storage. Um, <coughs> my home business and my husband's are on is on in that little half story above, um, and the bottom story is yeah bike storage, workout, you know little wood shop. It's just a mess. But. It also houses lots of raccoons and things right now. So the diagrams, uh, the drawings indicate it's going to look like the building that you're, uh, that, that, as it currently exists? The interior? The exterior. Oh, the exterior, yes. Uh, besides the addition. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Sorry. Just yeah, the, it's, it's, the it's very important to me to maintain the, the look of the Obviously, I would like, I want to add a little bit more space, but I, I, it's important to maintain sort of the historic look of the structure. So, I mean, we'll use the, you know, nice Does this toilet so. exist, the bathroom? The Sorry? Bathroom? Yeah, it, it currently exists. It does? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a working toilet, but it, the, it, it exists. And shops, sorry, slop sink or whatever. Is there plumbing for it? Yes, there's plumbing for it. It's, weird, it's not hooked up and we don't use it, but... It's, it's all there. I, I don't, I'm not finding the, the part where it says a, an accessory building is only one of those stories. There's, I believe it wasn't, as I said, building. it wasn't specifically written for accessory buildings. It was, it was written for the definition of a half story. Right. That's what it was written for. Just what, yeah. how to define a half story. And the, the definition. The only the definitions um, of the code. What I'm looking for is the the code where it says that an accessory building can only be one and a half story. That's what I'm not finding. That you, I think you just said that. Oh. Um, Not that we need to know, but I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure you have your question addressed. That the the half story is legal. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, 134-17A, 1A. An accessory building or garage may be located in any required uh, side or rear yard provided, A, such building or garage shall not exceed one and a half stories. That's where it's at. Okay, so I guess that brings up the question, do we want to see more documentation about the area of the half story? Or do you happen to have that with you? I can just testify that it was designed to be a one and a half story structure and continue to be. I, I think with the new code, possibly, I mean, with the way it's written, you know, certain numbers would be needed.
I remember the last time we went through this was Karen Park's uh, residence beside the gas station. Mm -hmm. And that was a half story thing. And what she did is she just basically um, did the studio, pl the plan that you did, and just shaded in, you know, um, the areas that were under the the height the requirement, right. and then just did a square footage thing showing that it was less than fifty percent. Um, um, I mean, how how about for the fact that the uh, the highest point of the building is at only at 15 and a half. I mean, just by eyeing it, I'm, I'm, you know, see, I, I think when, when I look at the plan here, it looks like a, it looks like the actual studio is going to be, the usable area of the studio is going to be way less than what this plan shows. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, okay. way, way less. Way less. <laughs> and so, it's and just so a little I think that's, narrow and out. It looks like, my God, we're doing a, you know, a real big thing here, and, but when you, when you, cut it down, it's really probably more like the the area is probably something like, I don't know, Beth, you would know better than me, but it would probably be something like that, is the actual usable area. Um, that's correct. I mean, it's going to be somewhere, have, somewhere in there, maybe yes. even less. The knee wall is quite low, so you the have like, is, is what, two feet? I think it's, it's around really two feet or two and a half feet, and I'm only saying this from memory. Um, I don't have drawings in front of me. Um, so that, you know, where you get to seven feet, you have a pretty narrow um, corridor in the center. Um, basically, we're just adding another narrow corridor. So what, what are you going to do with that space that's, um, you know, three feet high? Storage. What? I'm hoping storage for our, I mean, I, you know, I'm an artist, so store, it's storage. It, you can put cabinets or fill it in. Well, that's what we use it for now, and the main, the main structure is basically the same as it's going to be now, so. I mean, the main question is, do we, do we need numbers if somebody says, well, you granted it there, but we don't know specifics, even though we can sort of eyeball it and sort of say it's looks like it's beneath the uh, you know the one, the half story requirement, so, you know, square footage wise. So I, here's what it, what I think yeah. about it is that the the building inspector when he looked at this plan should have said, I need to see the measurements for the second story so that I know whether you need a for the half story, so I know if you need a variance for that. But that didn't happen, um, so it's up to us to decide if we want to see those, and I think that we probably do for... Um, um, I mean, just for the record, even to protect you, or if, if it, somebody comes to us and they have, it, we just don't know the specifics because we've never even been inside it. We have, you, we do have your drawings. We see you're under 20 feet, substantially. Uh, you know, but I'm not, not an architect. Donald may be, but I couldn't, you know, roughly estimate. So I apologize that I didn't realize that we were missing this earlier. I think we could probably um, you know, make a decision, and if it's approved, say pending the submission of accurate plans describing the second story as within the um, the area allowed by the code. Okay. That's not, yeah, that's no problem. I'm confident that it needs it. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. That way the building inspector, um, if he decides to measure something, which would be a big surprise, would um, have the accurate plans to, uh, to go by. So what's the height of the first floor, just out of curiosity? Uh, the ceiling height of the, the, the accessory structure? I mean, if you know. Of 
I think it's on there. I don't oh, know. Oh, is it on there? I didn't see it. Sorry. I don't know it, it off is. the top of my head, but it's, you know, a normal height. It's a, it's a little bit low because it's old, but. Uh. Yes, it's eight feet. Uh, so this uh, bathroom uh, is connected to the city, the village sewer system? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Where does that go? Up to Morris or Main Street? How does that get out there? Main Street. It's connected to, I, I don't know for sure, but it's connected to our, to what, well. Back to your house. Yeah, and then our house. It, it's not like, I don't believe there's a tie-in to the main there, but I don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's pre-existing, our ownership of the property. Do accessory buildings typically have uh, bathrooms in them? To your knowledge? Almost all the ones I've been in have at least a sink. Pardon me? Almost all the ones I've been in have at least a sink, a slot sink, and many of them have toilets, yeah. I mean, because they're almost all used for workshops now, or gar you know, garage. In the, in the village of Goldsburg? Yeah, like um, Gordon Robertson's, and like the ones that are of my size, they're all like workshop people's wood shops or whatever. Right? Like You've it. been here longer than me. <laughs> I know, it, and I feel like I'm. I, I've got a, a. I've got a garage in my backyard. You know, it's in. The, it's you know, it's uh, in the yeah. in the setbacks and the whole thing. But I mean, there's no bathroom in there. I mean, I I'm just like. But I'm. I'm like. A, you know, I'm not a normal. <laughs> village resident. I don't go. I don't see a lot of other people. <laughs> well, I'd say there's Sheds a lot of stuff, artists. So. I'm surprised, surprised, especially like, there's a lot of artists, and they all have at least a. A slop sink, which is what you need, right? In the, in the. When does this get within the definition of like a another living um, space? kitchen? That's apart from it. Yeah. Other than accessory building. Is there a plan to put a kitchen in? No. The, yeah, it's definitely not going to be another living and space. And no just what we have. Plan to put a bedroom in? No. Plan to rent <laughs> it still as a. still have to have bathing. Too. Pardon me? Yeah, you have to have a shower or a bathtub or something, right? Or, or there's no room for any of that in. And no plan to work to rent it out for overnight no. lodging. <laughs> no, no, no. It's hard. I, I'm not a plumber, but it seems like a long run for a, a downhill pipe to get from that um, from that back corner of the yard all the way out to Main Street. Okay, and still, have an, I mean, I could see it going down the other way, but I guess you'll find out when you when you demolish that. <laughs> Existing bathroom. Well, I believe it was tested before we bought the house, so I think it, you know, it's it's all plumbed, and there was something there that, but so also that point is actually much higher than Main Street. If you if you uh, think of how Mountain Avenue comes down, like our the water, if there wasn't grading, it would you know come. Our yards are all much lower than the point where it's coming okay. down. So the barn is like higher up than our house, for example. Uh, Donald. I I believe you were on the board when on Stone Street they wanted to convert a uh, pretty tall back uh, garage to living space. Do you remember that? You remember that? Stone Street? Yeah. There's some really nice that. barns on that street. I don't know. Yeah, I can't, I don't remember that one. Look. Yeah. It's a pretty substantial one. I think it's across from uh, the newspaper. Uh, you said in our building right now or something. The new, the new building. That might have some uh, information in it. I, I forgot what, what we did. They wanted to convert it to living space, and, and um, it just couldn't happen only because it's a change of use, and you can only really have one residential right. uh, living quarters on, on a property. Which I understand. I mean, that protects your neighbors in, in a lot of ways. And um, so before we close the, the public part of, of the hearing, I just want to raise my concerns about the shed, the expansion to the shed, um, in case we have any questions for Jen um, about them. Um, so the first one is the what I would consider a large size of the variance, where you know almost half of that backyard section is now covered with solid building in her yard alone, and then also that it is totally cutting off the, um, the neighboring yard to the northwest. So if we were talking about this um, as if it were a six foot fence, one of the arguments against a six foot fence would be we want to allow the light and yeah. the airflow 
and uh, you know the openness between the yards, and ex by expanding the shed um, or the barn, sorry, further into the middle of that rear area, it's um, it's completely cutting off those two yards from from each other and from light and air and so forth. So those are are my. Um, my two concerns about the shed, I you know, walked around and took, took a look and I, it's not actually, um, even in the winter, it's not very visible at all from, from the Butterfield side or really from any side. The most visibility it has is from the parking lot and the dumpster where the dumpster is. So I don't know how much that is going to, um, you know, how much that counters my my concerns, but I do um, think we should be very careful about um, allowing this rear section of, of any yard to be suddenly so um, dense and and completely filled with the with building. I want to say yes to Jennifer. Okay. I really do. But I, I share the same concern. I'm concerned about it. Um, I have a garage barn in my backyard. It's in the setback. It's in the corner. And I feel like I'm lucky that I have that. It's in the back. It's in the non-conformance. And I've never thought, well, I want more. You know, I figure I'm lucky I got what I got, and I'm not going to try to make it more. So I, I understand the program. I understand why you want to do this. But I'm concerned. I'm concerned about it. It's a, it's to me. It looks like a it, it's a big lot. So you can, you can do it. You know, you can you can stay underneath the the thing. But it, it just, um, yeah, it's just it's kind of concerns me. I'm concerned. And if it were so, one of our alternatives is in the front. But then that the downside that she explained is that it it loses some of the historical character. So that I, would I maintain know. this mm. sight line, mm. right? The trade-off is like, then you maintain the sight line, it's less in this setback area, right? It's it, it's same same area. It, like, I guess I'm just trying I'm to understand. I'm not saying, there's, I'm not saying the, there's no good way of doing it um, um, without sticking it smack dab in the middle of the rear yard, in the, the backyard, which would be horrible. Okay, so, but sometimes maybe you can't get everything you want. Yeah, but is is it the placement or is it the size? It's the bulk. And you know the, the fact that uh, given it, you know it's everything taken together with the width of the backyard, and that it's going to be expanding such that it becomes almost a wall between, you know, across the backyard and in combination with the neighboring shed. Uh, it's just a flow through feel, and I, I, when I look at the the, the when, when you talk about historical look of the shed as it is it exists, and you're looking from uh, Route 9D, and you look up through the Whistling Willie's uh, parking lot, and you see this tall six foot solid wood fence. It would seem to have less impact if it just ran forward a little bit. And, 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 uh, See, I don't. I have a diff I have the opposite opinion because there's this photo of looking through that from Main Street, which is one of the main ways that you would see this. You look through this archway, and then you see the barn as it was kind of originally um, developed. And so that's a sort of a traditional view, and as she explained, that's kind of the traditional relationship between the barn and Main Street. And so that's the trade-off, right? Is that then you would lose you'd lose this this connection, which I don't know if you seems would, like a reasonable one. I don't know if you would lose that. I mean, it would be closer to Main Street, but you could certainly have the same amount of square footage in the barn if you expand it further into. But not, towards Main Street. but not following, at least as I understood it, not following the guidance of the <clears throat> Department of Interior Historic Preservation that you're supposed to tuck modern additions onto the back. Right? I think that that's the justification for doing 
for doing it the way that they're doing it. So I, well, I by just, moving it forward, it would also reduce uh, the thirty percent um, variance re needed, and and the idea is to seek the fewest variances. You necessary. mean have the whole barn move up? You don't have to move the whole the barn up. You can it. you can expand the barn forward from where it exists. The addition. I mean, the addition, you mean? Yeah, I'm just thinking if, if you needed extra space. Uh, but, I, you know, I mean, these we're just talking about possibilities. No, you know, this is just all theorizing and looking at what currently exists and what can be done and what might be effective. I, I sort of feel like there's a, a, a concern under the heading of community character that these things people, that the board members have been saying, um, it also had an impact on community character because these s small backyard barns and sheds are traditional, they're common in the village. Um, but I, I feel like the, the, the more you expand one, especially if you add additional gables at right angles so the structure becomes more um, ambitious, you lose that, um, that kind of uh, historical rationale of, a, of, a, of an accessory building and it becomes a little more of a different kind of building, a little more substantial and it's a, it's a change of character. Yeah, I think you, can, you should look at it as the structure that it is, which is an, a large-ish barn carriage house in the back and the addition is within you know keeping with the sort of design and size of a an you know turn of the century barn in a sort of semi-urban I don't know what do we call this a semi-urban or like suburban whatever this what development was um, I mean could you you could move the, the addition up and then not have to apply for that variance um, at all, and then it would be a sort of a different set of issues, I guess. But um, I think this protects the character of the property the most. And uh, again, you have the testimony of my neighbors, who are the <laughs> who I feel like are concerned about the character just as much as all of us are, right? So I I just submit their testimony, especially Corey's, who is the person who owns the Sutter Barn. I mean, I talked with her at length about this project and. Uh, I can tell you that the, the aisle that you guys are concerned about in the back, um, I mean, it's one thing, and I'll leave it up to you to judge people looking in to the, to the property, so the public interest in this aisle of air and space. Um, but, you know, if they were here, and I think specifically in Corey's letter, who owns 7 Fishkill Avenue, the uh, value of that aisle and the use um, in terms of air, air and property friendliness and uh, you know flow between the properties is not, I would testify, is not as you describe or as you see it in the aerial view. It's a, um, you know, part of this back area, a cluster of properties. And I would argue that if, it, if we made a little courtyard in the middle, so for example, moving the addition up to be flush with the face of the barn, um, that would just be a dead, unfriendly courtyard. So uh, not used at all. And so in this way, we're preserving sort of the use space, which is literally like all of our kids run in between all of our yards. We have little gates in all of our fences. They're all short fences. And it's a very friendly backyard, which is why you know, I, I was talking to all of these neighbors before I made this plan. So anyway, you take that for what it's worth. But that's so architecturally, I mean, it's a nice design. Mm -hmm. and. Um, but when I look at this picture here, right, the building's going to be almost two feet taller, right? Mm -hmm. From this top, this is our first page here. But not only will it be first, uh, you know, two feet taller, but the the roof is going to run a squared out roof is going to run from here all the way to the top and over to here. So I mean, that's what your broadside uh, at rendering looks like. Yeah, well, the left side is just that little tiny uh, dormer. But but it's a dormer, but the, the roof is going to go straight up and over, even though it's back. So it's going to take up, it's going to go two feet higher, nearly nearly two feet higher, not two feet, but 
one inch off of that. But it's going to get squared out. So it's basically going to be from that tree right there is going to be blocked all the way over to here to this line here and come down, even though this part of the roof will be slightly set back. Mm -hmm. Am I right? I mean, yes. is that the squared out look it's going to have? Yes. So when because you're... this is what's drawn here. Right. But I yes, I would just answer yes. The the longer answer would be I don't think that's how you will experience it. For example, I took that photo up up high, looking straight on, so you could get a good view. But you experience it in the yard, which is lower than the barn. So so the the roof line is not the dominant. Feature. Now that's how people. But but you won't be able to see this area back here behind here from this basically from uh, virtually almost from this tree looking at this roof line from here. You're not going to see. Yeah, it would fill in the. That's what it'll fill in that area. It would fill in that area. Maybe this is a good time to read those letters. Okay. I only have two. I don't have the one from Corey, but maybe it's in the email. Should be. I guess I could probably read it into the record if you don't have it. Should yeah, if you have a printed out copy. Let me I start with these then. So the first one is from Mona Smith and Greg Smith of Five Fishkill Avenue, Dear ZBA and HDRB. Our neighbors Jennifer Zwarich and John Wayland have talked to us about their addition slash renovation plans to their house at 192 Main Street. We have no objections. They are good citizens and great neighbors and they've done a great deal of work to improve that property since they purchased the house. It's lovely and so are they. Sincerely, Mona and Greg. And then we have a letter from Mark Robom, who's the neighbor to the east on Main Street. Hello, Excuse GBA. Me, what the last name again? Robohm, R-O-B-O-H-M. Thank you. My name is Mark Robohm. My wife, Stephanie, and our three kids live at 194 Main Street. I am writing to you in regards to the proposed project at 192 Main Street, our neighbors. As a bordering neighbor to their permit application, I have reviewed the Zwarich Wayland project and we are fine with their proposed plan. It seems both historically appropriate and respectful. I might add that nobody decides to have twins. Coincidentally, like our neighbors, we too have twins <laughs> and often one must unexpectedly change to accommodate, like your floor plan. Also, please note that the Zvorich Wayland are also very active community members, street committee slash film society. So if this renovation allows them to continue to live here in Cold Spring, only good can come from this. Thank you. If there are further concerns, don't hesitate to reach me. Mark Robo. Okay. Okay. I used to have very nice neighbors. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want me to, if it's appropriate for me to read Corey's letter. She sent it to Jeff. She just has um, confirmed me, it to me. So maybe... I mean, you can read it. I'm, I'm 100% sure that Jeff has it, but I don't know if I have it. Let me see. Why don't you read it? I'm not finding it. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank okay. you. And then I can hopefully you can get a copy from Jeff. Or I don't have a print. I have it in my email. Um, to the this is to the Cold Spring Zoning Board of Appeals and Historic District Review Board. Uh, we've been notified by our neighbors at 192 Main Street of their proposed renovation projects to both add on to the back of their house and extend out the side of their backyard barn. They have shared drawings with us of the proposed additions and answered any questions we had to our satisfaction. Therefore, we're writing to both boards to say we support their renovation project. Our backyard shares a border with theirs beside our garage, and views from the back of our house look out over their barn and yard. Since our own garage has always obscured a significant portion of their barn, we don't see how their proposed addition changes much the view from our house and the feel of our backyard, or really the sense of shared, quote, space, unquote our multiple backyards create. Our kids frequently cross into all the yards on our block and they'll be able to continue doing so. 
because of our existing garage and their barn, plus a smaller shed behind our garage owned by the neighbors directly behind our property. This back corner of our lots has always been a, quote, no man's land, unquote, of structures. We don't see how slightly enlarging the 192 Main Street barn really changes anything. What's more, we use our garage only for storage, so even the view from one of our garage windows facing this new addition does not impact us personally. Knowing how precious space is to all of us who live in the village, we also understand our neighbors' desire to carve out a bit more for themselves and their family in their house, especially since they have three growing children. We barely see their house from our yard, so this proposed addition also does not impact us at all. What's more, we've been their neighbors long enough to have witnessed over the years the detailed aesthetic care with which they've improved and maintained their home and therefore have full confidence this tiny addition won't in any way detract from the lowly character of their house. We hope the 192 main project will be approved by both boards. Sincerely, Corin Reister and Patrick Donahue, 7 Fishkill Avenue. But Jennifer, what were the names again? I'm sorry. Uh, Corin, K-O-R-E-N, Reister, R-I-E-S-T-E-R-E-R, -E 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 and uh, Patrick, normal spelling, Donahue, D-O-N-A-H-U-E. And she's just texting me now that she definitely sent it. Jeff has it. If she sent it. Okay. Well, probably. And it um, didn't forward it to me. Okay. Or maybe it's um, I can forward it to you too. So yeah, this is the, she just forwarded it to me, the one she sent to Jeff. So I'll forward that to you and I can print it out if you'd like. Right. That's you don't need to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um so why don't we try to move this along? Does anybody have any other uh, questions or comments and then we can um uh or jen is there anything else you want to add before we close the public hearing um well i'd like you to take a comment from the public if anybody else wants to say anything if you want to you don't have to um and if she um sure well um i obviously support the project um i think that um there's certain things that you have to weigh when you're looking at a historic structure. And I think what's really important is the, the relation of this barn to the street. And the addition is really meant to be off to the side so you keep this historic relationship. Um, I don't see that raising the height of this is um, substantial at all. Um, and I think it would, you know, it's important to look at how much open space is actually around there. I don't think that it's blocking light or view from any of the um, yards around it because these structures are really densely packed in the back. And that's how they originally were. So I think it's, um, I think it's very much keeping in character the way that the the addition is off to the side so that it's not um, impacting the structure from Main Street. Um, let's see. I think I think um, keeping um, density in certain parts of the village are important. It is a dense village. Um, I think accessor keeping accessory structures is very important to the overall character, but also just to the quality of life people have here. I think we want to have people in the community who use these structures for work because those are the people who are always in the village picking up their kids, picking up your kids, they're watching over things. So I think we want to really encourage people to use these buildings in a way that makes people work at home. Um, they keep an eye on what's going on in the village. So I always want to support using these structures and I would support using them to have people living in them too because we, we're not that she's doing this but it's always something that we want to think about is keeping like this socio-economic diversity in our community and that's a lot of what these smaller structures do so I don't ever want to discount that um, I think it's an important thing especially when you have a community that housing prices get more and more expensive. We want to make sure that we have a community for everybody um, that can afford it and be part of it. So um, I would just like to always keep in mind the larger picture as well when you're dealing with zoning and planning because it's really sort of powerful about how a community develops and keeping it um, 
so everybody can be part of it. So, you know, I think that's, it's, you know, maybe not as relevant, but on a larger scale about how you think about the growth of a community, I think still think it is very relevant. So, so how does the barn itself or the accessory building help the socioeconomic? Well, you keep Set. Jen and Situation. John working in the community, and they keep artists here, they keep people who don't commute just into the city for work. And I think we want to keep, we want to allow that to continue happening. Um, you know, housing prices are expensive. It's nice that people can use those structures, um, be part of the community. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'm not expressing this as well as I'd like to, but I think um, I think it's important that we, um, you know. Can, can you make an estimate of how much further out the barn would have to expand in the front to get the same value out of the, of, of what these plans are providing? Um, I, I mean, that's... Maybe 10 feet, maybe 16 feet wide. I think that's, you know, you're also like really changing the character of the barn from how you see it from um, 9D. So I don't know. Um, I wouldn't, would like to look at that before I would make any sort of estimate of that. Okay. Can I make also one comment to add to that? I mean, I'd like to address, I, mean, I can make comment right there. I'd yeah. like to address, I think the, Rightfully so, you guys have a concern about precedent. And I also serve on a board that reviews tiny applications for tree removals, but that's our main concern all the time, even though there's a, you weigh that with a bunch of other things. Um, and I think in this specific case, uh, like let's take your comparison, Donald, I actually don't know the dimensions of your lot. Um, but my lot, I'm not asking also for a lot coverage variance, and I would wager that most of the people that would come before you that were expanding their accessory structure have a much smaller property than I do. Okay. Now, not all of them, but most of them in the village. So I feel that this is reasonable because I have a larger <laughs> lot, and if I could get this extra space out of, that's, that's a lot in modern zoning, out of my lot in a different way that, that didn't destroy the sort of historic fabric of the location of the barn, et cetera, I would, but I'm, you know, I'm sort of tied to where my structures are now and what they are now, and I, and I feel that the, the size of my lot and the fact that I'm not asking for an overall lot coverage variance, that I didn't go over, I'm, right, I'm going up to 29%, and I'm, that it, it shows that this is different than a lot of the other applications you'll receive for accessory structures. Uh, also, the one um, that you brought up that was, a, they're trying to turn it into a residence, or, you know, several of the ones in the lower village that have large barns like mine are, you know, already way over the, you know, the area, total lot area bearing coverage or whatever. I think for me, it's, I feel naive about what's going on in the village, and what, this is, what, when I look at this, this is, this is a pretty big deal in terms of what an accessory building is gonna become. And, and I'm not used to seeing that, especially with a bathroom in it. And so I'm trying to get my head around it, mm. okay? Um, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's got a studio, it's got, you know, a shop, it's got a lot of stuff. And, um, and, um, and I mean, Beth, I, I agree with you a thousand percent, you know, that um, we should have our home offices, you know, with all this in the accessory building and talk to the building, talking to the, uh, our, the building code says we can't have a, uh, a home business in, a, in anything other than the residence itself. So you got a building code issue, you know. Um, so you call it a studio, you call it a whatever, but you know. The, building, the New York State Building Code says, and it's not only a New York State Building Code, most building codes say that the home occupation can only be done in the residence itself. You can't have it in the accessory building and back. But our code why? Says, yes, I don't know the clue, but that's what they said. But our village code says you can. The village code. An accessory the village use code is a, doesn't, a, a home it, business. I check. I double check that before I did this whole thing, right? Our, our local code is that you mean it's in conflict with the state code? Well, I, I I don't know where our code says that you can have a home. I, it, it's a the definition of accessory use in our yeah. in the zoning code right. has a home business in it. It lists the acceptable home businesses, so it's ones that don't 
Is that in, in a primary a residence on, on, a, on a property? Accessory use. So accessory st structure use, which is what? Accessory use. Yeah. But, but you're, you have a studio for your personal use in there. Yeah. My, well, I'm an artist. I don't so yeah, so you're... you're, you're love. That's what we're currently using it as. The, yeah. the, there's no right. change in the current use. The art, the art studio, the workout space, the where we store the water. I'm not the building inspector, and I could care less if you're running. You could have, you know, I don't care what you do. Okay, I, I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking about, for me personally, sitting here tonight, I'm just trying to get my head around a big, a, a bigger accessory building that I'm used to thinking about in the building mm -hmm. and seeing and the activities in it and it's not in the other. It's, it's a lot. I mean, it's okay. a big accessory building, you know, when you look at the photographs compared to the neighboring one and, and the density of this building, you're... Um, proposing to increase by almost 200 square feet, uh, which is more than half of what's currently existing. So it may basically just adding on, you know, in addition to that, and, and again, the roof, the way it's designed, is it's going to take out a lot, a lot of this area up here. Uh, when you visually see it, uh, the, the structure, yeah, that's, a, that's probably one of the bigger accessory buildings I've seen, in, you know, personally. Maybe I saw a bigger one, like I said, on Stone Street, which was built a long time ago as well. Uh, but it hasn't been rebuilt to the height, and I think it's, I, I wonder if it's even over 200 feet. But they came in and they looked for, uh, they wanted to build living quarters in it. And of course that's a use issue, which, which this is almost, I think Donald's getting to it now, it's sort of, this is encroaching into that neighborhood. Of, well, you're going to use it for painting, but then you transfer the house, and what is it going to become? It's, it's going to be a sizable structure. I mean, it. Well, it already. I mean, I mean 600 is. square feet is a lot, even in in, a, in, a, in an apartment in Manhattan. Well, that's why we bought the property. I mean, that that's the reason that we bought the property, which is the nice thing about it. I mean, that's how. We're and you make a really good out. point that you're not exceeding the lot coverage. Yeah. And that lot coverage would be a natural. Uh, damper on how many, how much right. people are going to be expanding. In them. fact, the, the barns that are larger than this one in the village, and, and I've right. been doing a lot of research on it, are is the one that you say is. But there's several ones that are taller and larger. There's a couple on Stone Street. There's a, a right. couple in the back of right. the Church Street, so between Church and right. Garden. But there are several in the lower village where the lots are like this. And Do you, you know when they were the constructed? Around the, the same code? time. Around the same time. Before, yeah, the, before the code. Yes. Yeah, all before the code. I mean, that, that was really a defining characteristic of this yeah. village. So, so they pre-existed in yeah. that size. And they, you know, it, it's difficult to get them that size at this point. Yes. Uh, it's just it's something that the code tends to discourage or, you know, we have to look at the character of the community. So everything is a balance. So we have to go through the criteria, just figure out how things fall out. But um, Don't you have to get a... Permit. Sorry, I haven't done this in my house. You can get a permit if you're going to build a new bathroom. Definitely. So, so we wouldn't anticipate that if Jennifer sold the house and then someone else bought it, that they could turn it into a residence or a, an apartment or something without village approval. Well, in fact, they'd have to come because, before you for a change of use. Correct. Well, even I mean, they couldn't sort of Secret, not secretly, secretly do it because yeah. there's no or they. They could without a shower, but likely you would have you'd have a full bathroom in an well, area. I, I don't think we can we can guard against that. We're not enforcement, and we can't guess what yeah. future owners might do or yeah, a yeah. change of plans. But it, but that was the sure. But I, I mean that's it not was raised, but it was raised of what but it could happen an in the future, and so of sorts. I but we we can't protect against it, and we can't. Um, uh, you know, we we can't assume that a future owner is going to do the right thing and get a building application. Many many people don't get building applications for their for the work they do on their own. Well, and I, but we I can't penalize the, the applicant. Right. Yeah, I'm not, I, I we're guess not it's suggesting it's, we do. Okay. Also, but, I could turn it into an illegal residence right now. It's a it's a you know it has a bathroom in it. It's a it, 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 it's I, it, yeah. It's, I feel like it's neither here nor there. The addition has. Of staircase in it, the, the bathroom remains in the main part of the structure. In addition, it has a staircase in it and bike storage. It's literally like a staircase to the top and bike storage. So it's not the addition part, the increase to the size of the structure is not in any way could. I mean, I guess they could 
remove the staircase and put, I don't they could do a major renovation at some point, but I agree, I don't think it's, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you decide, but mm -hmm. I could do that now, is what I'm saying, illegally if I wanted to, but I, I don't, and I don't think it has any standing on this, like, what you guys are deciding. I, increasing the, the building a little bit doesn't make it more likely, I guess. Okay. Uh, if, or if you're, if you're bringing it up because of what I asked earlier, um, I would just say that I, I feel like when I don't ask that or when we don't know that, then six foot fences pop up where we expected to see none. Mm -hmm. Or, um, uh, for example, the uh, the house on uh, um, Richard Shea's house that he built is now a full time Airbnb, and I don't know that we could have stopped that with. Um, at the zoning board, but that might have been good information to get out in the open at that point. So that's why I ask. It's not because um, any applicant is committed to um, to not try to do those things in the future, or any future owner, um, you know, is going to be required to go to get a building permit when they make changes. That's that's all. If that makes any sense. So I wonder um, at this point if there's any new information that we can bring into the discussion or if we should close the public hearing and, and start our discussion. I'd, I'd like to hear, yeah, I'd like to hear uh, from Jen, Jennifer, um, how much of a disadvantage to you would it be if the, um, reno the renovated barn was confined more or less to the existing footprint and the existing form? Well, it would be a significant disadvantage because in order to do this project, I mean, I'm very much so try to be a responsible homeowner and I believe in the historic district a lot more so than I think a lot of people in this village do <laughs> and um, in order to save the structure and repair the the you know the problems with it that I won't go into right now um, it's going to cost us a lot of money and so being able to add that staircase to the top which which means that I can have a, a little bit more it's not that much more usable space upstairs but a little bit more usable space just by being able to have that staircase there is a significant advantage to me and um, makes the you know could, the could the staircase be mounted on the outside of the building I mean that I it, it could, we could do whatever but I would be shocked if the historic board would allow me to do that because I've done a lot of research in preparing to go before them on um, typical barns in New York and a typical carriage house barns in New York and that sort of thing and this we've been very careful to design this to be sort of to fit in not just our historic district but the sort of the larger um, community of historic barns and, and carriage barns in New York so I've never seen ones with this mm -hmm. staircase on the outside and all this research but I, you know I'm not an expert so. that's what I was thinking though I mean that you know that um, I mean you're a great architect. There must be a way that, that you could add a staircase, not not an exterior staircase. It's it, it's interior, but it's an addition. It's a it's a small addition to get to get a staircase up to the second the, floor. The staircase right? is the addition, is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Right, and you lose the bike storage. I mean, I'm sure that there are different variations that we could look at. Um, I don't think that by code one can add just an exterior staircase. It starts to um, be similar to a fire escape, which isn't allowed. So I think that the historic district would probably frown upon something like that. But um, I'm sure if we could come up with other solutions if necessary, I think Jennifer's point is um, the structure has to be, has never been cared for. It was substantially rebuilt in the 90s, but very poorly. And um, it's not salvageable, and it's um, going to cost a substantial amount of money. So they're trying to maximize what, you know, since they have to put this out, the, they get space that is very usable and for them. Um, but. And I, I would just plead with you guys that this is, it's a very small addition and I respect your concerns and you'll have to make your own judgment call on what it looks like. 
from the outside, but the amount of space, we literally, I have five people in my family, we can't hardly fit five bikes in there, plus our lawnmower, like it, the, the amount of spa usable space that we get is not very big. Nine feet wide is not a very substantial width. It's not like a big room. It, it, we're not going for some crazy over overdone addition. Um, so we, we could make it smaller, I guess, just to have this, the staircase in there, but I don't know if that would solve the, the, the objections that you guys have to the outside. In, in other words, the roof line, uh, I've heard some people say, or, right, or that sort of thing, just by getting rid of the bike storage, for example. Naturally, I want to make this as big as I possibly can, but I, I literally have tried, I'm being very honest, my very best to have sort of the minimal thing that could help with the getting the stairs up the stairs and having a little bit more storage for our, you know, growing family, basically. Um, I guess I come down to you know there 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 have been a couple where projects where you know the. the the, the allow the things were maxed out you know like this is maxing out to 29 percent and they feel you know it's a it feels from from this side of the table it feels like okay you know this is substantial but um, it's a big lot and um, you know they're not exceeding 30 percent and um, I guess in the end I kind of feel like okay well you know uh, I think this is the way the way modern life is today that you know you got three kids you got 50 bikes you got you know I only had one and um, I'm still cleaning stuff out and so I can get it from that perspective and I guess I'm not so naive anymore <laughs> so, um, I think I, you know I, I go up and I go I go okay I, I'd approve it is, is there any more um, information we need from the applicant or any more questions? No. All right, so I would like for us to close the public no hearing. No public hearing is here to speak. All right, nobody else. Yeah, for the record. Heard from Beth. Well, <clears throat> Beth is here. Nobody else. So we can okay, go I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 All right. Um, so we didn't talk at all about the addition to the house. I assume that's because everybody is probably okay with it. I don't have any issue with the house. I issue with the house. I mean, they're, they're filling the house out. It's you know, it's, it's a pretty common expansion. It's a yeah. House. It's, it's like not. A, there's no issue there. The it's within it's much of the footprint. And it's a very existing. It stays in character. It's not uh, affecting uh, anything. You know, it's not detrimental to the neighborhood. It's not detrimental to um, to um, you know the environment um, or to the neighbors who spoke. Yeah, neighbor. The neighbor. Um, it's um, when you look at it. You know, I don't from a point of view. Is, is, it, is it substantial? Uh, not really. Now, when you consider that the house is pretty much exactly on the property line, you know, right? Um, it's only a, a one by ten foot. Right. It's mm -hmm. um, it's not a uh, not a big deal. All right. So, um, getting back to the barn, then, my concern isn't how it's going to be used or that it allows additional uses and expansion of the use of the property, but it's simply that we would be allowing a 40% coverage of this back lot area at the same time that we're blocking off um, entirely the yard behind it. Where there are two yards, it's actually a T, isn't it? Um, and I have, would have much less problem having, I wouldn't have any problem if it were expanding forward along the parking lot there it looks like you could probably even you could probably even make it bigger if you went all the way up to the corner of of the uh, you know where the parking lot intersects with the neighbor's house. 
and then let the architects and the historic board figure out how to make that work. I'm not suggesting that um, they would, you know, it would be forced to remain at the same size that it that it is now. And it, and if that were the case, as you're suggesting, this area would, you know, even though it would come up near near about two feet, it would remain clear. There wouldn't be the cross gable roof. Well, that's that's just my imagination. It would be up to the architect to. Yeah. You know, to decide what to do with that. I'm just commenting on what you're saying. Yeah. So, I mean, what do we say to the people that have the little existing shed right there, right? Then they come in and they say, well, you know, I've got three kids, bikes, blah, blah, blah. And so they want to expand this. And so that's, now it's this cluster, very nice cluster of these accessory buildings. And so you expand yours, and okay, and then somebody else. And so, and I've thought about this over time. You know, how do we make these clusters? How big can they get? How can how big can everybody get to where then you don't have basically these? Um, you know, uh, uh, you got two feet in between buildings. They're big buildings, not little buildings. And so, uh, I, I think about it in terms of just not your building, but what could happen in the future with I mean, other people? There are some buildings, you know, a number of buildings in the village that are basically like 1,100 square feet or, or 1,000 square feet. Um, but I wonder, this would be 400 so more, uh, particu 400 less. particularly in this area, isn't there to some degree a first come, first serve? But the next application will be. Um, Evaluated in the context of the of the existing density, which is with their barn that could be expanded, mm -hmm. so that it may be that then in the future it will be harder to get an expanded barn in this area because it will already be a denser area. And I think that that my my understanding is that that's that's okay to do in the future. That we could decide that like that's enough in this area, and then be more limit limit what happens i think another difference from what i understand is that this especially this small existing shed is just a sort of a pop-up shed right mm -hmm. without right. um it's not a legal shed it's not a legal shed right from what i can tell when I walk there. so if they wanted to put something back there then they would have to meet the code mm -hmm. But they would come in and ask to not meet the code. Yeah, but then they would have to. And we would say, well. And we would say, well, there's already a lot here. And so, so maybe, right. so I guess that's the trade off of how much space do you want to allow? Mm -hmm. You know, do we want to consider that everyone might want to expand theirs? Mm -hmm. And so. With, with, with what you're saying, I suppose, on. if somebody would say, oh, if that's the thinking, then we should build first so that people can't build around us. I mean, I, yeah, I guess that's, there's a perverse incentive in that, I suppose. Well, I, st I, I, don't know, I still think overall it's, it, it's, it's, as I, overall, I think Jennifer has, 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 um, very carefully considered it through and you're maximizing your potential and you're doing and you're doing it uh, in character with the you know the historic district and this and the other but it is to my to my eye it's you faxed it and it took it takes me a little me personally it takes me some time to get my head around it but I, I don't I would still I understand what you're saying but I think by by extending the building Making it this long building, it's almost like um, it's almost out of character because now you've got this. I mean, how many, how many, two, you know, one and a half story buildings you see that big? You know, this is kind of cutting it up. I just wish it wouldn't cut that off, but it does. But you know, it's like nothing's perfect. So uh, I don't know. I think um, is it me. No, it's me. Oh, sorry, my son is wondering um, where I am. 
I I would vote to approve it. I think I think that we could I think that I could I could say that it's in character of the neighborhood. It's not going to be detrimental to the neighbors. I think there's going to be a certain amount of you know she vote first. She maxed out first. These guys you know I I would be it would be harder for me to say to them you can do the same thing mm -hmm. because you're going to be building this you know. And I totally get it about having accessory in the building in the corner is great because you don't have that dead space, and you get you have all your yard, and so it's it's. Um, so and I think that's what it is. I think it comes down to a hard reality of um, you know you accept you look what's around and then you decide, and now there's a little bit of airspace, so you know it's, you can expand this thing. So, I the, I think we've got. Um, We've got probably uh, okay on the sh on the house addition. I'm not sure where we are on the sh on the barn. And the reason that I want to know um, a little bit, uh, I want us to think about that, is whether we want to have whether we want to vote on everything at the same time. I'm personally not convinced that this is the least um, you know the minimal variance that we can grant to get the benefit that the applicant seeks from it. And I would much rather see an application that did not. You know that came forward and did not block off the backyard and take up 40 percent of the rear the rear area so but i also want to vote in favor of the house addition so i don't um, um i'm wondering what everybody else well, let's go would like before we start saying how we might vote or not we should just go through the criteria see where it leads us to yes but my my question sorry to interrupt is do we want to take two votes and split this up into two separate resolutions. I, I would we say we, we take two votes. Take one. Yeah, let's do that separate. Uh, Laura, what do you That's think? fine. Donald? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, is the applicant fine with that? That we start with the house? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, so, shall we go through that then? Yeah. Through the house? All right. Um, so right now, um, would somebody like to make a proposal that we adopt or approve the variances needed for the house? That is the um, variance of 10 well, what, feet. Why, why we got to go through the criteria and balance it. We will, but I want to... Um, I think before we... You want, we want to make a motion that we, we consider the variance, the, uh, consider the the criteria for the variances required to approve or disprove the, um, the addition to the house. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if we want to want to do that to separate it out, but we don't have to. We can go through this as two separate resolutions um, without a, a motion, and then at the end, the motion will be to you know approve or deny the the variances for the house. So. Um, I guess normally we don't have a motion before we go into this. No, we can just go in and just consider it a resolution right. with regards to the house that we're going to go through the criteria. So let's consider a resolution that we are um, granting the uh, variance of 10 feet to the side yard setback um, that extends one foot and four inches into the side yard. This is for the second story addition to the house. That we're considering granting. Yes. You know, provided the criteria we find allow it, you know, what you find out. Um, so the benefit can, the benefit sought by the applicant can or cannot be achieved by other feasible means. I'll start and I'll say, um, no, this is really the only, um, this is the best way to add area to the, to the house itself. Donald? Agreed. Um, sorry. So <laughs> I think I said so. We're on the house. Yeah, we're yes. just talking about the house. Oh yes, that's. Um, I have nothing to add. Okay. So you you agree with my? I agree. Okay. Eric, <clears throat> I agree. And John. I agree because the, half, the expansion of the house can't be seen from the street. It doesn't widen the house, uh, and the neighbors have spoken in favor. Okay, but there are no other feasible means for doing it. And there are no other feasible means. 
because it's part it's, it's within the footprint uh, well, with the exception of 1.4 uh, one foot four inches okay um, the proposed variance will or will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and a detriment to nearby properties will or will not be created by granting of the area variance will not Laura? Yeah, I'll Eric, I agree, will not. John? Will not. I agree, and I'll add that um, we heard from the immediate neighbors who would be most affected by um, the addition to the house, um, and they all supported the, uh, the plan. Required variances requested are or are not substantial. Laura, what do you think? Uh, it's not substantial. And given the size and um, particularly that it's it's on the the second store story and in the back. Eric? Not substantial. John? Not substantial because it speak it, it involves only a one foot four inch sliver in the ten foot setback area and is also uh, part uh, connected to the existing footprint of the house. So not only is it just a sliver, it's also build out from the house footprint uh, at only a minimal expansion. Um, Donald? Um, yeah, it's um, not substantial okay. dimensionally and it's um, location of the existing house is on the property line so inevitably you would be, um, any expansion will be faded to um, request the whole 10 feet but it's not substantial when you look at the overallness of it. Okay, the proposed variances will or will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. Eric? I don't see any adverse physical or environmental um, effects. John? Well, it will not because basically the roof line is pretty much the same, you know, fitting largely within the current footprint of the house. Um, I agree. Donald? Um, I agree with the comments already made. Laura? I agree. It also doesn't increase any impervious surface. Um, the difficulty necessitating the variance was or was not self-created, John. I guess having a larger family self-creates, but uh, let's see. Uh, it's working within the house itself, the existing house, and there's really nowhere else to expand and to do it. Um, you know, visually, um, not you know, less impactful than they've done it. So, uh, I, you know, whether we say it's self-created or not, really doesn't. It's just minimal if it's self-created. Okay. Um, I always say that these are self-created unless the house is burned down or there's something really extraordinary about the property. Um, it's self-created, in my opinion which does not mean there's anything wrong with it in and of itself. Donald? Um, I, I, I don't know whether 
it's self-created or not, honestly, in this situation. And I don't think it matters. Okay. Laura? Um, I follow your um, logic, Aaron. It's a choice, but I, um, it doesn't weigh heavily, in okay. my opinion. Eric? It is self-created. All right, so um, let me just kind of sum this up in balance. Um, this is the best way to achieve the expansion of the house, and there are no other feasible means. Um, there will not be an undesirable change to the neighborhood or a detriment to uh, neighboring properties, and we heard from the neighbors themselves. Um, the variance requested is not substantial. It's only a small sliver of the side yard setback, um, 10 feet by 1 foot and 4 inches. Um, there's no adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions for the neighborhood or district, and we're not increasing any impervious surfaces. And finally, um, there's a, a mix of opinion on being self-created or not, but generally leaning towards self-created. Um, so we can now take a vote on this if somebody would like to make a motion. I'll make a resolution. Uh with regards to the house, that on balance, viewing all five criteria and the minimal impact and the neighbor uh, approvals that we, um, that I personally vote in favor, and that we approve this particular resolution for the house for the expansion. Okay. As, as proposed on the uh, architectural designs. Okay. Second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we've passed the variance for the house. Um, so now we've got the variances for the barn. Um, do we want to have any more discussion before we get into the point by point consideration. Can I ask a question just as point of order? I don't sure. know right. Um, how does the historic district view board and the zoning board mesh together? For example, if you would require me to do something that is well never going to be approved by the historic district review board, then what is where you know what I mean, do you guys communicate or you have joint meetings or that sort of um, thing because you, you affect each other. Char you're judging character, they're judging character, you're right. Sure. So I guess first, we're not necessarily requiring you to do anything. No, I know, but I mean, if you do, you, sorry, I'll so, let you finish. So um, they would, uh, so if, let's say you don't get this variance for the barn, then it's up to you to decide what to do next and come up with another plan assuming you want to enlarge it. And then um, you might uh, ask to go to, you know, have a workshop with them and say, hey, the, the zoning board didn't let me build what I wanted to do. What else can we come up with that's going to be okay? And they um, could give you some advice. They could say, well, let's write a note to the zoning board and tell them that they're really wrong to not grant this because it's the only way to expand the barn. We don't know what they're going to say, but we certainly would take comments into consideration if they, and we have asked for them before in the past. I know that um, that's happened with 21 Parsonage the first time it went through, and also with uh, 41 Garden Street, where we, they gave a strong advice not to allow, that they gave a strong advice to allow a variance so that a two-story building wasn't necessary. And that happens before you vote on, or you deny a and then that discussion happens later. That's what that's what my you understand what I'm asking. I'm not asking it in a um, great way. Well, for I don't example, think I, I feel like you guys I don't know what how you're gonna vote, but you're giving me feedback that's in the purview of the historic board. Like you don't think it you think it would be more in character if it if it was a longer barn, for example. And there, you're not getting the feedback of that board on that topic. So would it be 
if it looked like you weren't going to approve this, wouldn't it be prudent to get the advice? And that was the reason. Would it be prudent to get the advice of that board? And this is just a question. I don't know if it, it would be. I'm just asking yeah. it. But the no, other thing is, you're go ahead. Well, no, I'm just thinking of. So the first meeting was the one on Garden Street, and we had the the letter from the historic Re review board to consider when voting on the variances, and that that was part of the decision making. So I, I see her point because otherwise, my question was going to be, if we denied the variances, and then she did the workshop, and then they wrote the letter that you explained, Aaron, that they might write. Did we then? Will we then reconsider our vote? Um, so if if we vote to um, let's say we vote to deny these variances, then we would have to start over from scratch when mm -hmm. they, when Jen came back. But it, you know it would be a big she would have a big head start because mm -hmm. we're familiar with the project and um, the new vote's not sort of undoing the vote. Right, we couldn't looking at it anew. We couldn't undo it mm -hmm. that way on an advice from the historic board. Mm -hmm. um, so an option is we can delay voting if you would like. You know we're Probably all of us are amenable to getting um, a letter from the historic board um, if we want to do that. Um, I don't have a problem with that. The other thing is that you're here now and you're wondering how they interrelate and everything. Well, you can carry back what you've heard from the board and the concerns that we've had and work perhaps with the historic board to find out what may happen. Uh, okay. You're just listening to us talk just openly and how we're looking at this project compared to other projects that we generally see. And, and I would appreciate um, an informed um, opinion from the Historic Review Board about just the um, appropriateness of such a ambitious accessory building. Um, that's something I I'm, I'm just don't feel I have a fully informed opinion on. I'm not, nothing else about the project bothers me. I'm not, I don't uh, the, the loss of views, the loss of airflow, I feel are tolerable. Um, but I've just, uh, the only thing that bothers me is the kind of the aesthetic effect of this, um, just this very substantial, elaborate building with right angle gables um, among, in, in a backyard among a cluster where, where typically there's just sheds. Um, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe that would be something that they would see as um, suitable and, and typical so on. And if, they, if so, I would feel differently. Is it possible with the things that we've discussed, Aaron, that we send a letter, to, you know, talking about what we just see as generalized concerns before we take a vote and to see what the thinking of the historic board would, would be with regards to the proposed project and if they're, but you, you've gotten out our concerns on paper and if we don't net whatever they approve or disapprove, we have to look at it just purely for the variances in the end. What do you think? Um, well, we could certainly um, delay a vote on this and ask the historic board for their opinion. Um, if you know, if Jen is also open to us doing that, maybe. Um, well, I think it would. I mean, I, yes, I'm open to it. And I also, just as a point, I think it would be a responsible move because you're, what you're, what I hear from your discussion, you're, you're asking me to do something that affects the sort of character and integrity of the structure differently than my application, but that also um, is about the, char the historic character of the neighborhood. It's not just about the physical things. And so it would be good to have I think some guidance on that point. I would like the guidance just also. So, but, but I'm not voting, obviously. But I would be curious to hear that. And do you think it's important at all? And we say just not to influence the historic review board, but to simply suggest that some of the concerns voiced at you know this hearing um, were as follows, uh, and we're just checking in how this proposed structure would fit in with the historic fabric. Sure. I mean, just so they don't just get it in a blank from us. Why don't Why don't we do that? Um, if everybody's okay with that, and I will, before I write a letter to them, I will, um, I will send it to everybody so that we can add our own comments or questions. 
Um, from my perspective, I'll just say that I, I think that, um, so we're not telling you what to do. Okay. I'm not telling you that you have to build it forward. I think from my perspective, what, um, what I would say is that I don't want to see a building that's taking up almost half of the backyard area, um, especially where there's already another existing building that's blocking it off. It's a, um, it's potentially, um, uh, you know, with that in mind, I don't think it, it would be responsible for me to, to support it, but I'm not against expanding the building in another way that allows allows the uses that are, are needed. So um, from my question to the zoning board would, or to the historic board would be, um, what are the other historic options for expanding the building that don't require such a large variance in the rear yard area? Exactly. Good. And so we'll, you'll send that around. We'll look at it, and come back, comment with you, and then. Uh, yeah, before I send it, I'll, I'll get that to everybody um, tomorrow morning, and then we can quickly get it over to the historic board so we can, we can come back and finish this on. Uh, well, you won't be here, will you? What? On the next, on the first Thursday. Or? Oh, uh, no, I'm not being here. Let's see. This is the fifth, so you won't be here on the nineteenth. Right. I won't either. So you probably want us to wait until there's a full board. I think we have a, another meeting on the uh, 2nd of April. Mm. Okay. I think maybe some time when is probably needed for you to get before the historic board. 19th, well. 19th our next meeting? Yeah. So you, I thought you said you were going to I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm, I'm going to be rock climbing. Um, the, I guess more for there have been instances where the last thing we want to do is set is set a an applicant um you know between two boards and my god you know one says one thing one says the other thing but it's inevitable that it happens in any municipality not just cold spring it happens okay it can't it can't not happen you've got planning boards zoning boards you have these issues and when it does happen that we have that circumstance where there's a problem between the two then the boards start to coordinate amongst themselves in the best way they can Sometimes it's a full-blown meeting, you know, but usually it's more informal. But we would we would work to make it as quick and as painless as possible. And, and so. just as an example to what you're saying and how we might get to a point where we're suddenly talking between two boards, if the project came in, we understood, as you said, this is falling down and becoming no longer a suitable use as, a, as an accessory building, well, if you came before us and said, well, we're just going to replicate this into the footprint that it's in, I don't think you'd be hearing all the concerns uh, because it would look like what we would see ordinarily as a shed, even though this is of, of a larger size shed compared to, you know, some of the others in, in, in the neighborhood. So had you come simply say we're going to rebuild this, you wouldn't be hearing as much concerns, I, I think, at this point. I wouldn't have to come before you, correct? Well, yeah, you would, you would, no, I, I mean, we would probably be done with the hearing by now. Right, because I wouldn't need permission to do that, to rebuild the structure and the same. Well, we would have to consider in, in grand variances, and, but th this is a bigger project. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. This is a little more expansive, as an accessory building goes. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're, we're just looking at everything, and this makes this uh, application different, you know, than, than some of the others. Okay, do we need to cover anything else tonight? No. So, so the, uh, adjourn the public hearing. Uh, to, yeah. Should we make, so, go ahead. Adjourn, adjourn the public hearing. Yeah. Oh, did okay, you? no, I understand. So okay. we can, the public hearing is closed, but we can, we've asked for new information. I believe we can still receive that as part of our discussion. Um, I don't believe we need to, um, uh, to schedule a new public hearing. No, we don't. Uh, well, wait a minute, it, because we might be coming with new information. Yeah, and I, I would like to have a chance to speak also. I know yeah. technically when you guys are deliberate, I'm not supposed to, so if we had new information, it, it would 
Well, so I'll have them right here. So you, formally, you can just reopen the public hearing. I mean, sure. Just, you know. All right. So let's reopen the public hearing. As a mistake, we keep it open. It I move to reopen it under, you know, considering uh, the concerns the board has had since we first closed it and upon listening to the board members. So I move to reopen it. I second the motion. All in favor of reopening the public hearing tonight so that we can continue it um, on 19th. the 19th. Are we going to, we won't, if you're not here and Laura's not here, we'd have to do it on the 2nd. Oh. I would like, yeah, I would. I would suggest we do it on the, the second of uh, April. So when we're all here. here. I mean, because yes. we wouldn't even have a full board to entertain it. Oh, you'd have three members, and that's enough. Well, Laura said she might wouldn't be here. Is that right or not? That's right. But it, you need four. The three of us could. I'm going to leave so that up to Jen. Would you like oh, to wait okay. until you have the full board, or would yeah, you I like think to it's have better three? to have the full board? I mean, yeah. Just in general. I, I, okay, because it seems the two that would like be this. gone are kind of more in favor of your plan than those. Yes, but I'm hoping here. to convince everyone <laughs> here. Like, All right, so. so so April 2nd, we'll, um, we'll uh, pick up the public. Is that okay with the applicant? April 2nd? Yeah, is that the same day as the other? Is there another public hearing? Yeah. I mean, that. You go first. It's fine with me. With okay, um, so um, thank you, sorry for the, uh, Late meeting, and um, I have a motion to adjourn unless there's any other business for tonight. No, I second it. Who made the motion? You seconded it. Who made the motion? Aaron. Oh, I did. No, I thought there was. No, I didn't. I, I moved that we. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I second it. Gotcha. Um, I can. I can store all of this stuff.